What's good, y'all? Welcome back to another Man of Monday devotional thoughts. As always, I am happy, I am grateful, I am blessed to be with you, and I am excited to have you choose to join me this morning. You could be doing anything with your morning, but you've chosen to take a moment out of your morning, out of your day, out of the beginning of your week to spend some time with me and God. So I'm grateful I don't take that for granted. So without any further ado, let us dig into the Word of God. Grab your paper, grab your journal, grab your device, grab your Bible, whatever it is that you need. Let us dig in. Our Man of Monday thought this morning comes to us from a short passage, but a powerful, powerful passage, pregnant with much, much, much conviction and power. It is John 3 verse 30, which simply reads, He must increase but I must decrease. He must increase, but I must decrease. Let us pray. Dear kind and gracious Father, Lord, we thank you for your word. We thank you, Lord God, for waking us up this morning. We thank you that you've allowed us to be here once again so that we can learn from your word and apply it to our lives. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. So the context for this verse is John is preaching and baptizing, and Jesus is also preaching and baptizing. So John's disciples uh, kind of have a dispute that arises among them about purification rituals. Then the conversation shifts to the fact that the disciples start worrying about the rise of Jesus. They say, hey, John, uh, this guy that you were pointing to, he started to baptize. In fact, he's baptizing more people than you and everybody is going to him. And John's response is a beautiful, powerful display of what it looks like to be settled in who God has made you to be. What I want to take away from this passage is John the Baptist knew who he was and he knew who he was not. Because it's not enough to just know who you are. Because if you just know who you are, you can also be tempted to grasp for more wondering if there's more to who you are, more to your calling. But if you also balance that with knowing who you're not, then you become perfectly nestled in the equilibrium of not self-esteem, but God esteem. I no longer have to grasp. I no longer have to wonder because I know who he's made me and I know who he's made me not to be. So I know my strengths, but I also know my weaknesses. I know my uh, potential, but I also know my limits. And that is where John the Baptist found himself. And that is the example that he has set for us in his response to his disciples. While they are concerned about the prominence of John the Baptist not being compromised, he's saying, no, 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 y'all don't understand. I told y'all back in chapter one of, of John that I am the voice crying out in the wilderness, making a way for this man. I told y'all, the man that's coming after me, his sandals, I am not worthy to untie. So what's happening is exactly what is supposed to happen. And I am glad that it's happening because this is what I was created to be. And how powerful is that um, one of one of my favorite sports is basketball, right? And one of our the best coaches in the NBA, Doc Rivers, he has a saying that says, "Be a star in your role." And what he's uh, preaching is that not everybody is going to be a superstar. Not everybody is going to be this immensely talented player who leads the team. However, everyone has a role on the team. Therefore, you can still be a star, but a star in the role that has been set out for you. And that is what John the Baptist knew about himself. He says, I am the one who makes the way for the one. So I'm good where I'm at. John was content. He was settled. His satisfaction didn't come from grasping for more, more platform, more ministry opportunities, more preaching opportunities, more baptisms, more followers. His satisfaction came from knowing his God-given role and fulfilling it perfectly. 
And in verse 29, right before verse 30, he says, so this joy of mine has been made full. Wow. This joy of mine has been made full. So John, John the Baptist is telling us, I am ecstatic. Precisely the reason why his followers were worried was the very reason he was excited. He's like, oh, Jesus is gaining more prominence? Yes. Jesus is gaining more followers than me? Yes. Jesus is, his, his star is rising past mine? Yes. So Jesus becoming more popular than him brought him joy. Wow. Jesus gaining more prominence than him brought him joy. And that is a revolutionary temperament in our age of addictive prominence and social media influence, which has infiltrated our church space. The thought, the, the God confidence, the contentment that comes from knowing who God made you to be and knowing that once I have fulfilled, once I am living in what God has created me to be and once I have fulfilled what God has created me to be, I am good. He must increase, but I must decrease, which means the more Jesus' star is rising, I, at the same time, my star has to descend. And that is supposed to bring me joy because ultimately all the work that I partake in, whether that be vocationally, whether that be career-wise, whether that be in the church, whether that be in my home, all of it is supposed to be for the advancement of the glory of God. So whatever I undertake, if it is bringing glory to God and bringing souls to the kingdom of God, I am supposed to be happy regardless of what earthly impact it is having on my status, on my popularity, on my reputation, on my money, and anything else that I am tempted to hold dear. He must increase but I must decrease. And that is supposed to bring me joy. So as you go about this week, as you go about this day, just remember and, and, and keep yourselves in prayer to be nestled in the equilibrium of God esteem. Not grasping for more, not grasping for meaning, but knowing what God has created you to be, what God has created me to be, what God has created us to be, what God has created the Berean church to be. And letting that drive you and being content in that, even if that means a cost, especially when it means a cost to what we as a society tend to deem as valuable. If this ministry has been a blessing to you, I pray that you would like it, share it, allow it to be a blessing to others. Also, if you would like to contribute to our ministry financially, you can do so in the ways that are outlined below our cash app b e dollar sign b e r e a n 4555 let us pray god we thank you man we this this was a hard word this was a powerful word this is a revolutionary word lord we must decrease as you increase lord our goal our lot in life our joy is for is to be to see you increase so lord i pray that you will keep that word Keep that in our hearts this day. Keep that in our hearts this week. And let that be the driving force behind everything we do. I come to you on behalf of Sister Paula's sister and her family, Lord. I come to you on behalf of the church, Pastor Wegar. I come to you on behalf of the East Baton Rouge school system. I come to you on behalf of our back to school. Uh, thank you for what you did to, for us in our back to school drive. Lord, I come to you on behalf of everyone who is asking for special prayer, Lord, both, both spoken and unspoken. I just pray that you will continue to do your will in our lives. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. God bless you.